warn you now, I have an Irish accent, so that's going to make understanding me slightly more hard. Uh, I also speak pretty fast, so if you really can't understand what I'm saying, just wave, and I'll, I don't know, I'll speak in Irish or something. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, the role of customer success in trials in software as a service product. Uh, and to sort of set the scene for this, um, we all kind of started here with, with sort of business where it was kind of, if you wanted to see a product, you had to basically talk to somebody, you had to schedule a demo. The price was kind of, you know, it was made up based on how much revenue the salesperson thought they could extract. Uh, in Ireland, we used to call this uh, marble floor pricing, which is you show up and if there's a lot of marble on the floor, you charge them a lot of fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but the shift that we've kind of observed is, um, is a move away towards uh, SaaS, right, where we have like, you know, no sign up at all is required to give it a go. It's pretty non-committal. You get a free trial, so not only can you, and you get a, a free demo, so not only can you see what the product does, you can also use it, and at no point have you made any commitment. And that, like, shift is ultimately, like, it feels like a very, like, user-friendly sort of positive thing, but something important has been lost there, in my opinion. We've kind of gone from a, we've gone from a world of, like, buy before you try to a world of try before you buy. And Ultimately, that feels like it should be positive, but another way to say that is we've gone from a world where we give you a beautiful guided tour through something and we show you off all the things you're most interested in and make sure you get it, to this warehouse where everything's there, go and get it if you're interested. Uh, to put it simply, we've gone from like a committed, I pay before you enter, guided experience where someone's in charge of making sure that you actually get value, to a warehouse, and if you can imagine like what a warehouse of art would be like, you could call it a museum, but if everything's stocked up in boxes, it's up to you to go and unpack it. And like, you know, another way to think about this is imagine like a, a restaurant with no waiters, where like everyone's, you know, the food's in the back somewhere, work it out yourself, you know, and uh, it's dangerous to assume that people are happy to log in and work all this shit out themselves. It's dangerous to assume that they will work it out themselves, or even that they want to work it out themselves. These things are risky. So, Let's just talk quickly about this sort of typical SaaS uh, flow. So someone comes along, they're signed up, maybe they have some questions, then they sign up, then at some point they start a trial of your paid service, and at some point they finish that, and when they finish, they make a decision. Are they a customer or did they fail? And typically, uh, in a lot of companies, sales will stop at a certain point, and you know, customer support and success will take over. And sometimes that could happen here, or sometimes it can happen here, but inevitably there's some sort of handover period. Um, but looking at the trial specifically is interesting to me. Oh, and by the way, an interesting thing is the way we account for this is like that everyone on the green side is the money makers and everyone over here is the money takers. So like we spend a lot of time worrying about like uh, how these things are accounted. You're either like sales and marketing or your cost of goods. It's an interesting sort of dichotomy to be one of those two things because if we look specifically at the trial, right? What if somebody's trialing like a 449 a month plan or a 999 a month plan? and they ask a question, and they're on trial. You could ask legitimately, if they're saying, hey, I'm trying to use a reports feature to generate a PDF for my boss so I can get promoted. If they're on a trial, is that a support question, is that a customer success question, or is that a sales question? And you could, you could argue it any way. You could say, well, they're a customer looking for support, so it's support, duh. Uh, but if they don't do it, they're not successful, so maybe it's a customer success issue. But no sale's gonna happen unless this resolves correctly, so who gets to own it? Well. It's an interesting way to think about it. So like, let's talk about the actual trial here, which is where, you know, as you said, the purpose of a trial is to establish if there's any value in the product. And therefore, any questions that occur in, in this trial, how do we make sure that people actually get through those questions so that they see the value? So let's, again, when we hit the end of a trial, we have a decision point. And this is where most software as a service uh, products will struggle because they say a lot of people start trials, we've grow tacked the shit out of it, basically anything you click you start a trial accidentally, and, uh, and they get to the end of this trial and they're not doing it, we're getting all these, you know, we're not getting what we want to hear, we're getting people saying I'll do this when I get the time, or you know, it's, this is a bit too expensive, or I can't afford it now, or it's just not a priority for us right now, or we just don't have the kind of budget, or you know, we'll get around to it at some point. And like, these are all the, you know, if you have exit surveys in your trial, you'd always get like variations on this. Uh, like what they're, you know, they won't give you the, the key truth, but all of these things actually translate to the same thing, which is, I don't see the value. That's what it's all about. The purpose of a trial from a customer's point of view is to assess the value, and from a customer success, sales, or support point of view, it's make sure that they get the value, right? They knew the price when they signed up 
if I'm trialing your $49 a month plan, obviously I think I can, try, I can afford $49 a month, depending on what's on the other side of the $49, right? It's not.